Hey everybody, this is Perch, and this is something a little different, but I uh, wanted to kind of just put the facts on the table, put the cards on the table a little bit between comic books. So obviously there's a lot of conversation about how comic books were better in the past and how they're not as good as they were back in the 80s or the 90s. So I thought what I would do is just take two comic books of relatively the same thing. In this case, we're going to be looking at X-Men number one from 1991 and X-Men number one from 2019. Two very different comics, two very different eras. We're going to look page by page through them, putting the uh, one comic up on the left, one comic up on the right. And you can just see for yourself kind of how the pages break down, what the differences are. Might be interesting to kind of take a look. It, it also might spark some uh, memories of, of comics read in the past and show you how styles have changed. So let's get right into it. Obviously, like I said, is X-Men 91 and 2019. Now, 28 years of difference between the two. Uh, quite quite a lot, if you <laughs> if you think about it. Obviously, uh, X-Men number one, uh, pretty iconic there. Chris Claremont, Jim Lee, Scott Williams, Joe Rosas on coloring uh, that comic. At the time, retailed for $1.50, which was uh, actually, people kind of grumbled about it. They bought it anyway, but uh, $1.50 was seen as like, oh my God, comics are more expensive than ever at $1.50. Um, X-Men 2019 version was coming right off of the Red Hot Dawn of X, uh, the uh, Powers of Ten, House of X, Powers of Ten. Uh, Jonathan Hickman was the writer for the flagship title. Little Francis Yu was a penciler. Uh, Jerry Anglin uh, was the inker, and Sonny Go was the colorist. This comic was four ninety nine, so uh, you know, kind of pretty pretty sizable difference there. Um, in fact, it's uh, it's more than uh, three times the amount of cost difference in twenty eight years. Um, but anyway, let's get into it. So obviously, the cover. This is one cover now. X Men number one. I don't show it here. It had this gatefold cover. You had uh, four versions where you could buy the covers individually, or one version. That had them all, and uh, that the, the one that had them all was a bit more expensive. Here you have uh, the pages, and the purpose of this video is not to go through panel by panel for you. I'll leave that up to other channels. This is uh, literally going through the pages. You can see, you know, page by page, page one, page two. Now, in some cases, we have some double page spreads going on. You see those identified as we go, um, but you see uh, right there very different styles between the two versions. Um, including the data sheets that they're using in the 2019 version, the work that was done in uh, the, the 1991 version. Now, as I go through this, one thing to kind of point out, we'll look at it a little bit later, is that one of the complaints that the modern comic era gets is the overuse of word bubbles. Well, this is Chris Claremont, and he was certainly not shy about putting dialogue in the comic, and you'll see a uh, pretty uh, massive difference in terms of raw text. Uh, I did not do a, a actual word count on this comic, but it's safe to say that the, uh, the 1991 version had at least four times the amount of text, either through uh, dialogue boxes, thought bubbles, speech bubbles, lots uh, going on there. Anyway, you see the comics. Uh, one thing that is, is kind of interesting is just as you look through at the coloring, the, the depth of coloring. Now, obviously, uh, Photoshop and other coloring tools have gone a very long way um, in the 28 years that have passed. And, and so you see several of those effects. You see some glow effects. You see some other things being done to the colors that give it a lot of depth. You do not have those capabilities in the uh, 1991 version. Um, so it gives the comics a very different feel to it. One definitely feels like a product of its times of the 90s. The other one definitely feels like a modern comic today where they're all using this computer coloring. Um, it's, it's, it's curious because people who are coming into comics today often look at the comics from the nineties and say, you know, uh, they, they look, uh, you know, look, look cartoonish. Uh, but for many, this style, this, this level of coloring, these kind of bold, uh, colors and gold images are, are kind of key to what they do. Another thing, um, that you see here is the background. So the backgrounds are interesting because, there is probably a slight edge to the 91 version of more detail in the backgrounds. There's definitely more detail in the foreground in the 91 version. There's just zero uh, mistaking that. But uh, there is a, a pretty heavy use of colors and gradients and other things going on. Um, not everything is filled out in the background in the 91 version. Little Francis Hugh does a decent job in many of those, although there, there's there's a lot of gradients used, a lot of coloring tricks in order to, uh, to make it look uh, more depth. But there's definitely some cross hatching, some action lines, some other things. Um, there's de there's more detail in the 91 version is a sim is a simple way to put it, but it is slightly um, 
y- you see a heavy amount of detail in the foreground when Magneto's kind of doing things or submarines are coming up. You see a lot of uh, effects that are being used. And in many cases, it's kind of the style of the page. Whereas in the the, uh, 2019 version, you see a lot of just letting the colorist take care of of the background. And sometimes there's depth and sometimes it's using just kind of a glow effect to take care of things. Interesting uh, effect. Anyway, um, some some definite. uh, the, the, The other interesting part as you look at the 91 version is how rapidly it moves from scene to scene. Now, this is a curious Thing, and it's going to be hard for me to describe it a little bit, but the, the 2019 version is definitely uh, decompressed, meaning they're, they're doing a relatively simple action and they take, you know, a page to do it. You know, a scene where uh, Cable kind of examines this other gun and, um, it, you know, they, they go ahead and take a page to do that. And then there, um, you know, there's a lot of drawn out scenes where, say, you know, Rachel is talking to Hesba and, and she's saying, um, you know, this is, uh, do, do your clothes have, uh, spikes on them? Um, is there a special occasion in this? And Rachel's like, yes. And that's three panels. They, they do. Meanwhile, in the 91 version, they're, they're basically doing kind of a month's worth of, of action in a single panel just through a heavy amount of dialogue. Uh, but it is, it is interesting to see the mix. Anyway, as we go through page by page, you see some of this. Uh, now, the X-Men in 91 had three double page spreads in it. The X-Men of 2019 had one, but that double page spread was actually kind of a data sheet. It was the credits and some uh, you know graphical design logo work for the comic itself. Um, interestingly enough, both comics end in sort of a things to come. The uh, X-Men version is a fully illustrated one where you get a uh, long shot and you get Shinobi and you get Omega Red and you've got the Brood and Celine uh, with, um, uh, you know, they're, 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 you've got a bunch of different things in the, uh, the 91 version all drawn. In the 2019 version, you basically get kind of a coming soon with the uh, Krakoan language that was invented and what looks like a uh, snapshot of issue number two. So a little bit of a different style there. Um, the coming soon is broken into the comics within the line that are coming and the dates, as well as this kind of visual image of the second book. So that's, that's in effect the comic. So let's, um, you know, kind of breaking it down by pages and by summary. So the, uh, the X-Men in 91 was 35 pages. The uh, X-Men in 2019 was 37 pages. Although to be fair, the uh, one in, in 2019 had multiple data pages and credit pages leading into that, whereas the one in 91 was putting the credits just on the page along with the action as Magneto's tearing stuff up in space. Um, there were five variants or five versions, I guess is a better, best way, better way to put it, in the 91 version, not counting the second printings and the stuff that happened after that. There were at least 23 variants for the 2019 version somewhere in that realm. I, potentially more. There's at least 23. There's likely more that, uh, that were one-offs. Um, both comics had a separate penciler and inker. So that uh, was, of course, not unusual in the 90s, far more unusual in, in 2019. Um, X-Men 91. Now, now, this was obviously a beast of a comic. It's uh, estimated that it sold over 6 million copies. Uh, the one from 2019 sold o- over 250,000. Now, with some of the variants, th- that number is likely a little higher. It's probably, I-, I think you could creep that up to 270 with some of the reorders and other things. But uh, that's that's where that sits. So, you know, pretty pretty major difference. Of course, the new stand was in full string. The 90s had a much higher kind of boost of comics. But it is interesting when you lay out with 23 variants, 250 to 275 uh, thousand copies sold. Meanwhile, 91, it just shows the strength of the market back then. Of course, you also had Chris Claremont and Jim Lee. That was a killer combo at the time. That was probably the, the, the height of what you could get. Uh, so, so obviously a lot more comics sold. Uh, because I like data sheets too, I did a very rough, now this is unscientific kind of breakdown of uh, what was going on on each page. The 91 comic uh, obviously loaded in a lot more action. Um, in many cases, the action was inconsequential, but it was still action and it was still the characters, you know, kind of showing off their powers. One other interesting part is woven in through the entire Chris Claremont, Jim Lee, X-Men in 91 was a lot of uh, kind of teaching the new readers what these these powers were like. Here's we'll we'll briefly explain Psylocke and we'll briefly explain the dynamic between Wolverine and Cyclops and the Gambit is a ladies man and all this kind of stuff. They were 
there's a lot of um, first-time reader stuff going on for the 91 version. 2019, there was none of that. There was just nothing in there that was going to really uh, make any sense to somebody who was brand new to the comic. Um, but the, uh, the, weirdly enough, uh, I mean, the 91 version was fairly straightforward, a lot of action, tiny little bit of flashback, some exposition basically gets you from action scene to action scene and then not separate, but you know, you did have two pages of pretty, pretty intense Psylocke cheesecake in there on the 2019 version. You have, you had, you know, much less action. Uh, you had heavy exposition, a lot of exposition, just moving things to, from one place to another, a couple pages of them fixing dinner some subplot work, data sheets, and everything else. So a lot more things going on, but uh, you see that the thing that suffers there is the action. You know, you have, uh, you know, almost two-thirds of the book is action in 91, and in 2019, it's, you know, it's it's not even a, a, a sixth of the book is action. But anyway, um, some other key takeaways. Yeah, ridiculously more dialogue in the 91 version, like ridiculous. Claremont absolutely gives Bendis a run for his money here. Um, the, uh, as I mentioned before, the 2019 version, heavy decompression, small scenes take multiple panels or in some cases, multiple pages to play out, um, just to kind of get the atmosphere right. In many cases, it's the same art or very minor art that goes on as we're just catching characters, talking to each other. Really none of that going on in the, in the 1991 version. Um, the, the 1991 version, it covered a lot of ground in, in uh, you know, slightly fewer pages. It was a shorter comic by two pages, technically. Again, the data sheets are a cheat. Um, but it was, it was a slightly shorter comic, and yet covered a lot more ground. A lot happened. Uh, kind of status quo change for Magneto. You got the training. You got the in- intro. You got the X-Men going into space. You have multiple battles, you know, both with Magneto and then again with the Acolytes. Um, you got training. A lot is going on in this comic. It's jumping from thing to thing. Um, as I mentioned, the background work, you know, fairly even the detail work. Uh, now I know people are going to bristle at that, but if you really look page by page, uh, there is there, the, the background work is, is not as, as starkly different as some people have let on. Now, granted, again, as I said, little, uh, you tends to do a lot more than most artists. So it's not a you know, representative of all of comics. And Jim Lee would lean more heavily at times on kind of the cutout panels or uh, speed lines or, or action, you know, other, other things that would allow him to kind of trick the background out. That said, uh, the foreground detail was just, you know, uh, area of magnitude more in 91. Uh, the one, the version in 2019 uh, heavily leaned on the colorist. And that's it. You know, the coloring tools are more advanced. Uh, as I mentioned, there's more you can do with them. And so they are. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But um, many of it uses kind of tricks of gradients and glows and other things to give the page the appearance of more depth, save some work on the part of the penciler but, and the inker. But it, it, is, um, it, it's, it creates an initial deeper look, but the more you look at it, the more you realize it's, it's actually a lot more stark. So there you have it. That's, uh, that's the two. I'll leave the judgments up to you in terms of the comics, what you like better. Uh, there's going to be fans of both styles for sure. But, you know, it, it, it really was striking to me a couple things that came out. Uh, obviously, I like that era better. I, I've, I'm not hidden that. Uh, but the, the two things that really came out is, one, Claremont was using a hell of a lot of words. This was probably more wordy than your average Bendis book. Um, but the dialogue was moving, you know, was working with the action. So you have these pages with action going on. You have heavy dialogue moving the scene around. And it's... Uh, you know, it, it, it feels different than when you have heavy dialogue in a decompressed book. There's a major difference between the two. Um, it was nice how Claremont always does a great job of just, you know, bringing new readers along while keeping the action going. Obviously, Jim Lee, uh, this was, you know, he was a master of his work at this point, uh, being very, very comfortable with uh, everything he was doing and, and certainly a good comic and uh, got a lot of, of real you know, difference, you know, this, there is a major cast. This has forge crammed in it as professor X has all of the X-Men. It's got the acolytes. It's got Fabian. It's got Nick Fury. It's got Magneto. It's, it's, it's utilizing a huge amount of characters far more than the 2019 version. And yet it feels like everybody is still getting their chance to, to shine and do something interesting and unique. Anyway, let me know your thoughts below, uh, on the comics, what kind of things you may be surprised by. And thanks for listening.